Bowguns are a truly fascinating weapon in Monster Hunter World. Every other weapon in the game has set motion values as well as animation times and combos that determine how you play the weapon. Everything else you do in terms of your build are entirely to make your numbers higher, higher EFR, higher EFE, and just in general max deeps. But how are bowguns different from other weapons as well as why are the ammo types so important and which ones are the best? Well I'm Jinjinx, one of the Monster Hunter math guys, and this is Jinx's musings, bowguns and ammo types. So let's talk bowguns, what makes them unique and why are ammo types so important. Each bowgun loads different ammo types and uses them differently. Bowguns are the only weapons in the game that have different animation times depending on your build and weapon choice. Lower recoil equals a faster firing rate, as does a lower reload speed equals a faster reload. And of course more ammo capacity means you get to shoot more before you have to reload, therefore having more active DPS uptime. If you imagine that the entire emptying of your clip plus your reload is your attack combo, your actual combo animation time does change depending on your build. Calculating these animation times and combo time changes and the effective DPS that results from it was actually how I got started in Monster Hunter Math in the beginning. My very first spreadsheet I ever made was one where I frame counted the different animation times for the different levels of recoil, reloads, and then calculated in that spreadsheet the effective DPS of different clip sizes with different ammo stats. Now why do I bring this all up in a video that's supposed to be about the meta ammo types? Well that's because these factors are extremely important in determining what makes different ammo types effective or not. Whether any guns in the game actually use an ammo to its full potential or not does determine how good the ammo is in Monster Hunter World. That all being said, let's cover one very important ammo stat that is necessary for understanding which weapons are good or not. And that's damage mods. So there are two kinds of damage mods in Monster Hunter World. There is close range damage mods and ranged attack damage mods. So all of these can be stacked up to three times, however you will very rarely ever have three of these on one gun. The reason is is that generally speaking, bowguns want to have a lower recoil for faster fire rates. For example, on the KT Glutton, the monster blender, the probably most broken weapon in this game. Going from an 8 clip plus 2 recoil to an 8 clip plus 1 recoil over the course of all 8 shots plus your normal reload is 18.32% DPS increase. Very nice. And part of what makes the KT Glutton so broken is the fact that you only need one recoil mod to hit this recoil level on spread 3. This gives you room for two close range mods, and that third close range mod is not worth that drop in DPS from losing the plus 1 recoil. The reason for this is simple. Basically, the first close range mod gives you 20% more damage per shot when in close range, the second gives you an extra 10%, and the third only gives you 5%. On top of this, the faster animation time in DPS increase is actually multiplicative, not additive. This basically brings the total bonus to DPS to 1.53816. Very nice. Now ranged attack mods are a little different, they go with 20%, 15%, and 5%. Now this is great, right? Well, the balancer is that basically nothing can use ranged attack mods well at all. But we'll cover that in more detail. Now let's talk ammo types. There are 7 main damage ammo types in Monster Hunter World. Cluster, Spread, Normal, Pierce, Slicing, Wyvern, and Elementals. Technically sticky deals damage, but you don't use sticky for the damage because its DPS output is terrible, use it for the KO. Now for all of these, the only two that are actually considered meta are spread and cluster. It's actually a little bit obscene how far behind the others are compared to those two. Let's start with clusters. You are likely very familiar with this one already because it has a very notorious reputation in the community. It does have an extremely low skill floor, arguably the lowest in the game, and can get you very easy sub 2 minute hunts. Now do not mistake a low skill floor with a low skill ceiling, it is very difficult to get world record runs with clusters. But that is a whole separate topic. 
So clusters deal insane damage that ignores hit zone values, easily over 500 per shot. The balancer is that you cannot move while clustering and can carry very little ammunition. Rocksteady Mantle plus Health Booster plus extremely frequent trips and flinches make up for the former. The ridiculous amount of damage per shot and the spare shot armor skill alleviate the latter. If you want to consistently kill things super fast, this is almost always the best option in Monster Hunter World. Now Spread Ammo. Spread Ammo was actually fairly balanced when the game came out. Higher damage per shot, but also generally lower capacities on your ammo, and also you have to fight in a more denagerous range. But then... Katie came out, and with her came the Monster Blender. Yes, we mean the coveted R7 Glutton Heavy Bowgun from KT. Prior to KT, the best spread heavy bowgun in the game was the Nergigante Heavy Bowgun. But then very quickly people realized the power of the Glutton and that throne was very quickly taken away. Due to its obscene clip size, low recoil, ability to use two close range mods and non-elemental boost, the Monster Blender dealt over 55% more sustained DPS than the Nergi Heavy Bowgun could. This catapulted spread into the top slot for ammo types. On top of that, spread ammo has a natural affinity with close range mods. The triggering range on close range mods is exactly equal to the max range of spread ammo. Ergo, you get that juicy close range mod bonus every single shot. Very nice. Now that we know the meta ammo types, let's cover why the others aren't meta. Now, normal ammo is in a really weird place. Pre-Glutton, it actually had better ammo stats than the meta heavy bowgun for spread at the time. It got 3 more rounds per clip, but also had a slow reload. However, normal 3 has a motion value of 32 per shot. Spread 3 has a motion value of 8 per pellet with 7 pellets, that totals to 56 total motion value per shot, plus or minus 7 points of damage due to rounding. That is 75% more damage per shot. Holy hell. This is further compounded by the fact that Spread's max range is also the triggering distance for close range mods, so if you want to be shooting with close range mod damage bonus, you might as well be using Spread. And ranged attack mods trigger outside of Normal 3's max range. Yes, outside of it. Oh, and the minimum crit distance for normal ammo before you get reduced damage is only two steps away from the max range of the close distance mod. This gives you this really awkward two-step distance between getting the close range mod damage bonus and not losing damage to minimum crit distance. Now, this is all assuming you don't use the ballistic skill, in which case you can be point blank for close range mods without being out of minimum crit distance. And this also makes it so that your ranged attack mod has about a two-step range where you can get the ranged attack bonus before being out of range and dealing one damage per shot. All of this puts normal ammo in a super awkward place. In order to deal max damage, it has to either fight in spread ammo's range anyway, or it has to fight in that awkward two-step range distance for ranged attack mods. Assuming you run ballistics, and if you're running ballistics, you're losing a level 2 skill, so your EFR is going down. And even with all of these stacked on top of each other, it still deals less damage than spread. Alright, let's talk pierce ammo. It's... Kinda bleh. So, I haven't played the previous game, but from what I've heard, Pierce was so ridiculously overpowered, it was basically the glutton of that game. So, Capcom beat it with a nerf stick so big, they turned it into Ancient Leshen in Monster Hunter World. Pierce 3 has a motion value of 8 per tick. At first glance, this isn't actually that bad. That means in order to match normal 3's damage, you only have to pierce a good weak point 4 times, and pierce a good weak point 7 times to match spread 3's, correct? Therein lies the issue, a good weak point. Pierce's tick rate is frankly too low, and the monster models frankly aren't big enough. Most monsters don't have weak points big enough to even fit 4 ticks in, much less 7. And while in an ideal circumstances we would want the other ticks to make up the damage, they really don't. The way hit zone values are distributed on monsters in Monster Hunter World makes it that they normally have a few really choice weak points you want to aim for and everything else just takes trash damage. Now there are monsters that have extremely good hit zone values throughout like Odagaron, but even those monsters are so small that you can't even fit 7 ticks in them unless you get an extremely good shot angle. 
Now, Octempad Zeno here is kind of the exception to these rules because when he is critical, his entire body is a giant weak point. But even in this case, Glutton still beats Pierce Heavy Bowgun. Pierce Heavy Bowgun's just a lot safer because of the range. The main reason for this again comes down to weapon mods. So Glutton gets to use its weapon mods on every single shot it lands on Arctempad Zeno's chest. On the other hand, Pierce Heavy Bowgun only gets to use close range mods on the ticks that happen close to your character, while the ranged attack mods only apply to the ticks that are far away. This creates a giant dead space in the middle when neither mod applies. It's just physically impossible to get more than a few ticks at either end of the spectrum, so it doesn't get that juicy mod bonus. That all being said, Pierce, Heavy Bowgun, and Light Bowgun are by far the safest weapon choices in Monster Hunter World because they have the longest effective range out of every weapon in the game. You can just stand back, kite, and tickle the monster to death. I mean, you are tickling it, but it will die. Eventually. Next up, we have Slicing. So, if you weren't aware, when the game initially released, slicing was busted. It was insanely overpowered. The motion value was stupidly high. You could literally headlock half of the monsters in the game. This is the only time Capcom has actually truly heavily nerfed anything in Monster Hunter World. And yes, I'm counting the CB nerfs in patch 2.0 because those barely affected it. Which has landed slicing at a really weird place. It just has low DPS now, it's not a very good DPS option. It was initially meant to be a tail slicing option, and it's still good for that. Its damage isn't particularly high, but it will eventually slice a tail while regular shot damage is physically incapable of doing that. But tail cutting is kind of a questionable thing anyway in Monster Hunter World because the access to investigations gives us easy buckets of tails. I mean, they're so easy to get now, we can roast them to get a few extra rations. Now, it does have the benefit of using separate hit zone values, which tend to be better than shot hit zone values on monsters. But at 6 damage per tick at 5 ticks, that's only a 30 motion value, so it really doesn't do that much damage, especially because its ammo stats tend to be a lot worse compared to other damage ammo types. And you literally can't even carry enough anymore after the nerf to be able to kill something with it. Really, the only time we ever see it being used is against KT, because the slicing damage will actually damage her horns and do horn chip damage unlike regular bowgun ammo. But outside of that, you will pretty much never see this being used. This is further compounded by the fact that damage mods don't work with slicing ammo, so you can't get any damage bonuses on it. Alright, next up is Wyvern ammo. Wyvern ammo is, like, so much fun. It completely ignores hit zone values like clusters and actually has the highest damage per shot in a single hit you can get out of heavy bowguns. This makes it your go-to option for any wake-ups you do with heavy bowgun. At 110 motion value for the primary explosion and 36 motion value for the secondary explosion, this thing hits like a truck, 146 motion value. It is important to note that only that 110 primary explosion damage actually gets a wake-up bonus damage though. Now if you want to specifically stagger something or just wake it up, Wyvern Ammo is your go-to, but it doesn't really work as a primary ammo type. In terms of DPS output, it's actually fairly good. It's not quite spread level, but it's fairly decent. The issue is you only get to take 10 of them with you to a hunt. Unlike Cluster, which simply has more damage per shot, even if it's a less single target damage, you simply don't get enough damage per shot out of a Wyvern to really kill something before you run out of ammo. Wyvern also has the added bonus that it does benefit from close range mods, which pushes its damage output even higher. Fun ammo type, very good as supplementary damage, especially in wake-ups or for staggers, but not a primary ammo type. And finally, we have Elemental Ammos. So, there are five different Elemental Ammo types, however, Dragon is kind of its own separate category, so we'll cover that last. So, for the other four, that's going to be Thunder, Water, Ice, and Fire, they basically do what Pierce Ammo should have done in the first place, which is be a piercing ammo type that actually deals damage. Elemental Ammo is actually the only ammo type that Light Bowgun does more pure DPS than Heavy Bowgun does. This is because of the fact that there's only one level of elemental ammo. When you compare a rapid fire plus 2 with a 4 clip and a normal reload versus an 8 clip with a normal reload and a plus 1 recoil, the damage difference is very negligible. It's going to be about a 3% DPS increase. 
which is the case for Elemental Light Bowgun versus Elemental Heavy Bowgun. But this is assuming that the Rapid Fire does deal exactly twice the damage of a normal shot. The issue with, say, normal ammo is that you Rapid Fire normal 2, but you Regular Fire normal 3. That means that instead of dealing twice the damage per shot, you're actually only dealing 25% more per shot. So yes, normal 3 guns do tend to do a lot more damage than rapid fire normal 2 guns. But spread does a lot more than that, so we don't use normal 3 much. And Pierce can't even use rapid fire, so it's kind of a null and void argument. So using elemental ammo on heavy bowgun is kind of like signing up to use a worse elemental light bowgun. You can still do it, and it'll still work fine, but there are better options. As a side note for builds, you always want to get elemental level attack 3 if you're using any of these as your primary ammo type. Basically, level 3 is the cap for elemental ammo. Alright, dragon ammo. So dragon ammo is just like wyvern ammo, it is an excellent supplementary ammo type. The amount of DPS that dragon ammo can put out on a downed monster that is weak to dragon is absolutely mental. But it does suffer from three glaring issues. It is a dragon type ammo that is piercing, very slow moving, but still piercing. Now this basically means that you have to use it only against dragon weak monsters and they have to have big enough weak squishy hitboxes for you to get a lot of ticks out of. The other issue is because it is so slow moving and so short range you can pretty much only use it when a monster is down or locked into a really long animation. And of course, the same issue that Wyvern Ammo has, you can barely carry any. All of these issues kind of combine to make it where it cannot be a primary ammo type. However, anytime a Dragon Weak monster is down and you can use Dragon Ammo, just chuck all of it at it and you will deal so much damage. Now, Dragon Ammo is a little weird. You only want Dragon Attack 2 to cap the damage on it. Which is good because it's a supplementary ammo, so you don't want to use too much of your build for it. And that is every damage ammo type in the game, guys. Hopefully this helps clear some things up for you guys, since there are definitely better ammo types than others in Monster Hunter World. But you know, it's a game, have fun, play what you like. Sometimes I like to do Wyvern-only meme runs. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you learned anything interesting from the video. And Tuna does stream every single night on Twitch from 6 to 10pm Central Time. I do play with him very frequently, so be sure to leave a follow, doesn't cost anything but helps us out a lot. And if you'd like to find other like-minded hunters to hunt with, or just come hang out and chat in general, we do have a Discord, the Mathalos Nest. We have a very active community of players in Monster Hunter World, Destiny, Apex Legends, as well as God Eater, just so many different other things, so come hang out. And we do have a Patreon that has new tiers on it this month. And a special thank you to Russell Alicon, Ven, Broken Leah, John Cohen, Ken Alvarez, Robin, Bram Orsel, Lightweight, Skylar Yang, Mongus, and King Jong Poon. And thank you so much to every one of our patrons. Your guys' support literally means the world to us. We couldn't be doing this without you guys. And we do, of course, have new meta videos coming out, as well as some videos covering other video games. You can probably guess which meta video we're doing next. So be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that good YouTube stuff if you want to see that video the moment it comes out. Anyway, that's all I have for this one, guys. Happy hunting, hunters, and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye!